um, um, some people have MRSA as a natural, uh, normal floor on them. Or staff. Um, for bacteria, there's airborne, um, foodborne and waterborne, soil vector borne, which are um, animals, worms, or insects, and sexually transmitted. These are um, ways in which the bacteria can be transmitted. We're writing this down. Just oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So airborne would be a good example is influenza, the flu. Mm -hmm. By sneezing, you can pass that on. So food and waterborne disease would be like cholera, so waterborne disease. And food um, bacteria would be salmonella, which is, I, I, I read a study where 70% of chicken has salmonella on them. So make sure you cook it thoroughly at 165 degrees. <laughs> um, soil um, and vector-borne, soil can have the worms, wing, ringworm, pinworm, um, worm, worm, worm. Uh, vector-borne are uh, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes carry a lot of Lyme diseases. Ticks, we all know about Lyme disease. Um, and sand fleas and <coughs> also, please, um, like the plague, yeah. mm -hmm. the black plague was um, uh, from, it was actually caused from a flea. Mm -hmm. And then sexually transmitted diseases, your STIs, chlamydia, uh, HIV, AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis. Okay, we're done writing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Um, viruses reproduce inside living cells. Are you writing this one down? Yeah, sure. Okay. All of them. So the viruses, what a virus does is it actually finds a cell inside your body and it goes inside of that cell. And that's why antibiotics don't work. Because they can't, if they kill the cell that it's in, it can, it won't, it'll, it will start deteriorating your body. Um, and then fungi include mold and yeast. We all know that um, with Hurricane Katrina, a lot of those homes got a lot of the black mold mm -hmm. on the walls and they were um, not able to live in those homes. So um, that can cause some respiratory problems. Is that the same thing similar to asbestos? Was it right? Asbestos. Asbestos. Sorry. Oh, asbestos. Oh, yeah. Because um, I know a lot of people have lung problems. Is that the same thing? Is that yeah, cool, asbestos is different. Asbestos is actually a material. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that is that was used, um, and um, when it breaks down, mm -hmm. it breaks down into small fibers and, and goes into the lungs. So it's not really a disease uh, from a pathogen. Okay. It's from a material, yeah. like lead mm -hmm. okay. or mercury. Okay. So you just use for insulation. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. My uncle died from asbestos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Parasites um, live on mm -hmm. another organism without contributing to hosts. Tapeworms, hookworms, mites, mm -hmm. fleas, and ticks. So um, what can happen is um, eggs can be on one of these uh, insects, and the insect will come and bite you, such as a tick, and lay the eggs that um, were in the pathogen that is inside of them. <coughs> um, as far as worms go, tapeworms, hookworms, pinworms, um, important to, cook, to thoroughly cook pork and beef because the worms can live inside of them. Chain okay. of infection is a pathogenicity and it's the ability of the organism to cause disease. The virulence is the vigor with which an organism grows and multiplies. 
Something that's important about virulence is it varies with, um, with the disease. So one example is um, you can have um, 10, um, 10 germs, you might say, or 10, 10 cells of the plague and 10 cells of the seminilla. And those 10 cells of the plague are going to do more damage because they're more virulent than the seminilla. Mm -hmm. Like typically in our, um, as I said, 70% of the chicken that we buy has a seminilla. So if you're cooking it properly, you're not leaving it sitting out at room temperature. It's not going to produce more bacteria. It, it doesn't have a high virulence in comparison to the, the plague. The plague just, it, it just multiplies so quickly. And it's, you know, so that's the importance about the virulence. Specificity, specificity is the attraction of organism to the specific host. So a mosquito attra being attracted to your body heat for its um, blood meal. Yes? Isn't that also uh, like certain viruses only affect uh, certain species? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, source of infections, reservoirs, elements in the environment. Um, you have inanimate objects, which is known as fomites. Fomites is just another word for inanimate objects, like a doorknob, a toilet seat, a desk. medicines, air, food, and water. And blood. Okay. Human sources, um, Clients, other healthcare personnel, visitors, maybe from those infected actively. Um, an incubation stage, uh, in the incubation stage of disease. They could be carriers and um, endogenous. So I have seen where um, the, um, the flu virus is <coughs> large in the community. I've seen where skilled nursing facilities will be closed to visitors, and um, if it has run rampant into the nursing facility, they will not admit new patients. It's what they call moratorium. So moratorium is where they don't allow new patient, new admittance into the facility. So it's important that we educate the visitors. If you see someone who's got the runny nose and is coughing, um, to educate them on what damage they can be doing by visiting a nursing facility or a hospital or source of infection are um, through animals. We have um, rats, cows, pigs, sheep, <coughs> insects, mosquitoes, ticks. Oops, I'll go back. Um, so rats have a, a lot of disease. There's one major nasty disease, it's called a hemvirus, um, and that is from their droppings or their urine, um, and it can sit for a very long time, like a couple of years and you not know that it's sitting there. Um, you've seen this in the southwest part of the United States with the Native Americans, they've gone into sheds and have cleaned the sheds, and then they develop um, a terrible respiratory um, infection. They filled up with fluid so quickly in just a number of five days to where a death did occur, and they, didn't, and they were not able to identify it because it is rare. Um, so rats can cause disease. Cows, we have the mad cow disease, which you may have heard of that. Not so much in the United States, but it was an epi epidemic in um, England, and that's why we don't allow any imported beef. Um, mad cow disease is, um, has to 
do with the, their brain. They, we all have proteins in our brain, and it changes the, um, the it actually changes the DNA structure of the protein in our brain, which causes it to develop holes. You just get holes all over in, in the brain. What did you say? Is it hendo? What was the thing for the rat? Hantavirus. H A N T A. I know. Okay. Okay. And the hanta comes from hanta um, Thailand, I think. It, it um, most viruses are named after an area of where they were originally found. Yeah. Okay, can I go on? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, modes of transmission, you have contact transmission, you know, skin to skin, um, airborne, enteric, and vector borne. I think I'll be talking about each one of these. Yeah, contact direct transmission is a susceptible host, comes into direct contact or indirect contact with the source. Um, direct is like skin to skin, indirect is like dressing, needle, uh, surgical instrument. Um, and then you have droplet, your uh, mucous membranes exposed to secretions, airborne less than three feet. And an example they have here is venereal disease, as far as the droplet. Um, it may also come in contact with equipment, masks, instruments, eating utensils, linens, and body fluids. So remember during your um, practice, during um, your labs early on, and I, I talked to some of you about leaning up on the bed, just remember that that is an area where people can have um, their germs. My husband had to go to the hospital, um, and, and he was in ER. And I was sitting there with my studies, and I just took a good look. And like, you know how the bed, the gurney's like angulated a little bit for them to sit up? Well, right underneath there, I could see dry blood. Oh. I know it wasn't from him. He wasn't bleeding. Yeah, so I was like, I pointed it out to the nurse. She wasn't happy about it. <laughs> OK, so airborne transmission results from inhalation of contaminated evaporated saliva droplets, which are sometimes suspended in airborne dust particles. 